You will now be placed into conference. To mute your line, press star 6. To unmute, press hash 6. Today we'll be chatting about SIPC's new mandate of XPRL. What XPRL is, how this will affect your clients, and how SAGE will assist you in easing this new compliance requirement. On the agenda, we'll be going through the definition of XPRL and IXPRL, which engagements are required to comply, which entities are required to comply, when will you be required to submit your first set of XPRL financial statements, an introduction to Sage Final Accounts Online, and we'll chat a little bit about the advisor program. What is IXPRL? and XPRL. IXPRL, the technical term, is inline extensible business reporting language. XPRL is a structured way of digitally reporting your annual financial statements. What does this mean for us accountants? A piece of data in your financial statements is tagged. You will then create a file with these data and upload them to SIPSI. XPRL is basically an identifier for elements and values. All these elements and values are, are defined in something called a taxonomy. So why does SIPSI decide to go through this route? Prior to the implementation of XPRL, qualifying entities were submitting ASS in PDF format, which meant manual analysis and capturing of data, which exposed the data to the risk of human error. As you're all using the same tags, it makes reporting a lot easier. So should SIPC want to know your revenue amount, or the revenue amounts of all qualifying entities, it will be far easier to extract. XPRL has been around since 2003. Governments around the world have embraced this change in technology. One of the burning questions is, which engagements and enterprises does XPRL affect? If you an entity, is currently required to be audited or independently reviewed per the Companies Act Public Interest Score, then you'll be required to submit. If the entity has been submitting AFS to SIPSI when submitting their annual returns in the past, they will more than likely have to comply. Please note that exclude voluntary audits and independent review. What type of entities are audited reviewed by the Companies Act. Six private, state-owned, CCs, and non-profits are qualifying entities. Please note that cooperatives, trusts, and entities who are not required to be audited or independently reviewed are excluded. XPRL has been rolled out on the 1st of July 2018. So should the anniversary date of incorporation of the entity be coming up. Please note that you have 30 days thereafter in which to submit the annual return with the latest available audited annual financial statement, irrespective of the year it applies to. Please also note that for CCs, the allowance is 60 days after the date of incorporation. So how can Stage help you and your small to medium business be compliant? We have a cloud offering, which is found in Sage Business Cloud Accounting Accountants Edition, which is called Fund Accounts Online. This offering is currently free. This financial statement tool is easy to use and will generate a first me compliant set of financial statements in no time. I would now like to move on to a quick overview of Fund Accounts Online. Where do you find final accounts? Once you're registered as an advisor, you'll find final accounts under the company console area. You select the company you're working in and launch your task pane pop-up. There you'll find the final accounts tab on your extreme right. You will then add a new set of accounts or open up one of your existing sets. Thereafter, you'll be diverted onto the final accounts portal where you will see the compliance 
contact details with the specifics required around the date of your reporting period and your client type. We currently have two offerings, PTY Limited and CC Packs, which has been created under the IPRIS for SME compliance reporting structure. It is very important to note at this point that XPRL is currently being offered on our PTY Limited Packs. The XPRL generation for CC Packs will be released in due course. Once you are in the application, you will see four tabs, the Summary tab, the Trial Balance, the Data tab, and Accounts Preview. On your Trial Balance, you can capture your account balances either via Import from Stage Business Cloud Accounting, manually, or via CSV. Once you have imported these, these amounts, you will be required to map these balances to the accounts in Sage Final Accounts Online. The data tab is capturing all your non-nominal data, such as the company name and registration number. Please note that the PTY Limited Compliance Pack has an updated section to incorporate compulsory disclosures required by SIPC. The Accounts Preview is where you can view the amalgamation of the nominal and non-nominal data you have entered. You will also be able to select your different engagement reports, such as your audit and independent review, and make various other changes in disclosures. Here, you will be able to generate your PDF set of finance statements. It is also at this point that you will be able to generate a file in XPRL format. I would now like to pop on to our live environment to show you how to access Final Accounts Online and how XPR is incorporated into our software. For those of you that are not familiar with this current environment, this is the home page of our Sage Accounting Accountants Edition. You'll navigate to your company console. Here we'll be able to view all of your companies that you have listed under your profile. You select on the company you wish to create your financial statements. Click on Final Accounts Online. Here you'll be able to view all of your in-progress and finished sets of accounts. If you wish to view all your sets of accounts that you've created, including those that have been deleted, please click on All Sets of Accounts. You select your pack that you wish to operate in, or you can add a set of accounts. Your trial balance screen, as mentioned before, is where you enter your account balances. I have populated the trial balance with basic entries for items in your assets, liabilities, income, and expenses field with your comparative. Your data tab. Your data tab is where you'll input all of your non-nominal data. As you scroll down, we have see a new section added in our PTY Limited set, which is your information required for XBRL account. For sections where no specific additional data requirements are required, you will see a little pop-up that you don't require any other information. Any changes to your cash flow can be made here. For all reconciliations and additional disclosures in your notes, please refer down to the Notes to Financial Statements section. The Accounts Preview tab. The Accounts Preview tab is your basic layout before you'll be able to print 
or save better financial statements. It is on this tab that you'll be able to make slight edits and changes to your set of financial statements. It starts off with the company information. Should you want to change any of this information, hover over the area you wish to change, and you can edit the data here. This will divert you to your data tab. Your contents page lists all of the reports in your pack. You have your statement of purchase responsibility and approval, which is editable by you. Your engagement report, where you'll be able to select the different type of reports that's applicable to your entity. Please note, if you are submitting by XBRL, you cannot leave the report on no report default. You have to select an audit, independent, or compilation report. Your director's report has all your compulsory companies act fields. Statement of financial position. A statement of comprehensive income and retained earnings. Statement of cash flows. And your notes to the financial statement. Should there be additional accounting policies that you wish to add, simply expand the box. And make the necessary changes. As you can see, we have a little check which verifies the information that you've inputted into the set of financial statements. If you don't want to see this thing, you can just close the option. As I mentioned before, you have two options to generate the PDF or iXPRL file for online filing. Please note that if you are going to generate a file, um, for iXPRL uploading, that you need to clear all outstanding issues. For this, you need to clear all of your validations in your check set of accounts. For easy reference, please click on the hyperlink to the area that needs to be considered. Once you're complete with your check set of accounts, you can generate your file. This will then divert you to the summary section. Please be sure to refresh your page, change the status on your file. You'll get an error, or you'll be able to get the green ready to download status. You have the following actions to view the file, download, print the summary page, or delete the file. For submission to SIFSI, select the option Download to File. This is the XHTML file that you will be submitting and uploading to your SIFSI portal when completing your annual return. So what is XBRL? How do you see it? It doesn't look very much different than your normal set of accounts would. If you right-click on a specific area, such as your company registration number, you wish to inspect. If you see my little pane that's popped up down the bottom, you'll be able to see there's actually a tag associated with the specific field. A amalgamation of these tags have been compiled in this document, and simply you will be able to read these tags with ease of reference. Should you want to generate your set of accounts, 
PDF, you have the option to do it with or without your watermark. And here you have your pretty set of efforts for SME compliant financial statements. How does Stage 5 account online ensure that you are compliant? As previously mentioned, funds accounts have been prepared under efforts for SME legislation. We are geared towards small to medium-sized entities, so you will notice things like a combined statement of comprehensive income and retail earnings, as opposed to two separate statements. From an perspective, as a user or an accountant, you will have to ensure your prescribed reporting ties in with our offering. At this point, I would like to point out the taxonomy endpoint we are reporting towards at the bottom of the page. So, just find an account online, not be geared to your reporting legislative requirements. We kindly suggest that you use solutions such as Caseware and DraftWorks I'd like to thank you for joining this quick session. I hope you found it informative. Thank you.